Let's understand the data model that Ignite uses to store the data and how we interact with the data which is stored on the Ignite. So there are two representations of the same data. One is physical, the way data is stored and the another one is logical. And this is how we interact with the data. So all the entries or anything that we are storing on the Ignite is stored in something called binary object format and that is entirely taken care of by the ignite as for the logical representation of data we have two views provided by the ignite the first one is evalue view and the second one is sql view we have already talked about the basics of key value or sql when we covered the features and the use cases so in the key value view we interact with the ignite as a key value store so it doesn't matter how ignite is storing the data we get the values by key and uh, let's say we ask ignite to store the entry as the pair of key value pair okay so this is key value view this is pretty simple in the sql view the data is treated as a sql table as the database table and so we can trigger the queries in order to read the data to fetch the data so we can trigger a query something like hey get me all the entries where key is like abc so we have two views to interact with the data. We can use it as a key value or we can treat it as a database with the help of SQLs. So this is on the representation of data. One is physical and one is logical. Okay, moving on. Now, whatever data set we have that we want to store on Ignite, maybe as a database or as a caching, doesn't matter, but we have the data set. Now this data set is partitioned into different partitions okay and these partitions will be stored on ignite nodes it depends on how many nodes we have it depends on the cluster but from the data model perspective the data set we have is divided into different partitions and each partition will be stored on let's say a certain node that is the general structure we can go one level down so in terms of data set, let's say we have entries. So simply consider the keys, not the values at the moment. So we have this data set, we have different entries that we want to store. Now these entries will be mapped to different partitions. Of course, a single key would be present on a single partition. But the thing is, the entry is mapped to a partition and the partition is mapped to a node. okay and how does it work how how do we do this mapping well it is done by something called affinity function so affinity function defines this mapping in which it defines the mapping of keys to a certain partition and the mapping of a partition to a certain node and that's how the lookup works when we want to fetch a key with the help of affinity function we will know the partition first and once we have the partition, we will be redirected to that particular node which stores the partition. So when we want to fetch a particular entry, we have the key. Now with the help of affinity function, we indirectly get the partition from that key with the help of this mapping. And once we have the partition with the help of affinity function again, we will go to the particular node that stores that partition. And then that node will return the corresponding value of that key from that partition. So let's revisit again. We have the complete data set. That data set is partitioned. It is stored in partitioned way on different Ignite nodes. Then we have the mappings of key, partition and nodes with the help of affinity function. We can go one more level down in order to understand how it works. So let's say we have the data set and in this data set, we have 10 keys K1, K2, to K10. So this is the whole data set. And here we have an ignite cluster of let's say three nodes all right this is node one this is node two and this is node three so when we store this data set this data set will be partitioned it will be divided into different partitions and because there are three nodes for the simplicity let's say the whole data set will be divided into three partitions one partition will be stored on n1 second partition will be stored on n2 
and third partition will be stored on n3 all right so we have the data set now we have the partitions partitions are stored on the node let's talk about the keys now the actual entries now each partition would store some entries so let's say this partition stores two entries k1 and k2 n2 partition stores another three entries let's say k3 k4 and uh, k5 all right and then we have the third node third partition that will store the remaining entries so let's understand what we did here we have the data set we scattered the data set onto the ignite cluster each ignite node is storing a partition and each partition is storing some keys how these keys are mapped with this partition is defined by affinity function and similarly k3 k4 and 5 so basically the mapping of keys to the partition and mapping of partition to corresponding nodes it's all decided by affinity function i hope this is clear now let's say there is a change in the cluster maybe n1 goes down so what happens to this partition when there is a change in the partition we know rebalancing would happen and in rebalancing some data will be moved around the cluster so when n1 goes down the data that will be moved is basically partition this whole partition will be moved so let's say this partition got moved to n3 that means we are moving the whole partition so all the keys that were stored in this partition will also be moved so now n3 has two partitions this partition is storing the keys k1 and k2 and the remaining entries untouched all right so that's pretty much it on the data model for now we will cover more things when we do the hands-on but i hope it's clear what is the meaning of partitions how partitions are stored on different nodes and how the keys and partitions and nodes are mapped using the affinity function and how rebalancing happens internally it basically moves the partition